Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, on our first day, we had Graduate Studies Forum A. In that forum, our students focused on connecting SDGs and TVET. Today, this is a continuation of that, and our students are going to have that continuation. But then, the strand for this day is um, TVET and sustainable development. That's the short part. We have three groups of presenters. Uh, so we're going to, I'm going to, to introduce them at the start of each presentation. So I'll start with um, the first dual presenters, who are Katrina Rosales, if I pronounce that well, and Joan Acosta. So I'll start with, in that order of alphabetical order, so I'll introduce Joanna Acosta first, and then Katrina second. Joanna Acosta enrolled in the MA in Leadership in TVET and Workforce Development at UWI St. Augustine in Trinidad and Tobago. She has a bachelor's degree in Business Administration, Concentration Management, and a bachelor's in Education, Social Studies, and History. She has over 10 years teaching experience in the education system. Katrina, on the other hand, is currently pursuing an MA in leadership in TVET and workforce development, again at UWI in St. Augustine, Trinidad and Tobago. She has worked work experience in hospitality and tourism industry working for organizations such as Marriott Hotel Trinidad, Hilton Trinidad, Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, and is currently employed at MIC, Institute of Technology, in the capacity of internal verifier. This course, she says, of study will provide the knowledge, skills, and attitude needed to be an agent of be an agent of change for the TVET system in Trinidad and Tobago. Please welcome our two first presenters to come to the podium. Unfortunately they are both sitting down, not coming to the podium <laughs> because they cannot share the same place. All right? Click up. Good morning. Good morning. Right. Greetings all the way from Trinidad and Tobago. First of all, Jamaica is a lovely place. The, per the person is hospitable, and we appreciate the fact that we're getting the opportunity to be here to experience this TVET conference. So as the chairman said, my colleagues before looked at SDGs, Sustainable Development, and why is it relevant? We looked at the SDG 4, the education, and now we're going to look at SDG 8, decent work and economic growth. Now, when you look at decent work, it's for the aspirations of people in their working lives, and it involves productive work environment, fair income, security, social protection, and equal opportunity for men and women. Now, what is decent work? Benefits, social protection, meaningful work, rights at work, and a living wage. We all can attest to that. While we work, we must be paid, isn't it so? and you want to be paid accordingly because you're working hard. I don't think anyone is sitting here 
expects to work for free. So we're looking at next, we're looking at the SDGs and how it promotes sustain, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work. We look at some targets, and these targets are aligned to the ILO's operational work. The first one, I'm just gonna briefly run through them. So the first one, to promote development, support activities, decent work creation, in two, in entrepreneurship, creativity, innovation, encourage the formalization, economic growth of micro through access to financial services. We also look at another target where it improves resources, efficiency and accordance with sustainable consumption and production with developed countries taking the lead. We looked at achieve full employment, and we also look at, we're looking at to be developed by 2020, a sustainable, reduce the proportion of youth not in employment, education, or training. So all these are targets aligned with the ILO's standard. And during the course of this conference, we, hear, we heard a lot about the new, the new thing now, the Industry 4.0, and now it's moving to Industry 5.0, so we're moving fast. So when I did this present, when I did this PowerPoint, uh, we looked at the world, the world of work is driven by globalization and technical and technological revolution. It's undergoing changes and we all can agree. Industry 4.0 is really moving fast and, and forward. So we look at 3D printing, advanced robotics, digital uh, analysis. We look at a borderless world, skills and knowledge gaps, values, attitudes, behaviors, all that is coming out of TVET and all that is being pursued as it pertains to decent work. So what does this mean for Trinidad and Tobago? When we look at the context, when we as a group look at the context of Trinidad and Tobago as it applies to decent work, these things came to mind. Freedom, equity, human dignity, and security is paramount important as it pertains to decent work. And I'm going to list out some of the programs that Trinidad and Tobago has. Training for employment programs. We have the MUST program, where I can gladly say I have been part of this program for the past 13 years. Yes. Training young persons, motivating persons, to be able to go into the society. And this program was born out of one of the late, our late Prime Minister, uh, Dr. Patrick Manning. He was walking through the village and he saw some youths on the side of the road at 10 o'clock in the morning and it's like, why are you all here? They said that they didn't have any certification, they weren't employed, they didn't have the experience and no one wanted to hire them. And that is where programs such as the MUST program, the HYPE program, the NSDP program, all these programs bond. So I am very privileged to be part of that. And we also have the industry craft program. We have the national, as I said, the national NSDP. And we also have the URP. And of course, these are just some of the supporting agencies in Trinidad and Tobago to help with employment. We have the NEDCO, we have craft training program for women, the non-traditional skills training program for women, and also, of course, the Ministry of Labor and Small Enterprises. But you know with everything, there are implications. And some of the implications when we looked at this, in, in terms of a Trinidad and Tobago context, we found that politics plays a major part 
in. And I see in some head shaking because apparently it's across the board, right? <laughs> Not just in Trinidad and Tobago. So we have politics, we have resources, and also work ethics plays a very big part in the implications of decent work. But at the end of the day, there is hope. So what can we do? What can we do? The way forward. Of course, if we have a magic wand, we could fix politics. I'm just saying. Right? Uh, work ethic, training, collaboration, and resources. And I heard the word collaboration with some of the speakers. And during the cocktail, we spoke to some of our colleagues from the Mona campus. And this is what collaboration is all about. Forming a network, coming together to share ideas, to share resources, so that at the end of the day, the winner, TVET, will be realized. And in conclusion, my dear colleague, Josanna Costa, she came up with this quote. A happy workforce is a productive workforce. As such, decent work and its conditions are major contributors to and indicators that a nation's countrymen are mature and hold high values geared toward achieving developed status via sustainable development goals. Based on the criterions provided, it is evident that Trinidad and Tobago is on a positive course of action in achieving and maintaining the core SDG, which are cross-sectional to the successful attainment other SDGs owing to its highly structured social protection system. I thank you so much for this opportunity. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Um, our next presenter is going to be Mr. Wycliffe uh, Doyle. Doyle is a student, MPhil PhD student, pursuing studies in leadership in TVET and workforce development at UWI Mona campus. He holds an MBA with emphasis in business management and a BED from the University of Technology, Jamaica. He is a chef de cuisine, professionally trained, certified by CIA, that is Culinary Institute of America, and America Culinary Federation, ACF. He has been a TVET practitioner since 2005 and has special interest in establishing and maintaining culinary standards in Jamaica. Please welcome Mr. Doyle. Good morning, everybody. I must apologize for sounding this way. My the flu is upon me. Nevertheless, I am here to present <clears throat> an examination on culinary education in Jamaica. There are at least five new hotels and resorts that have been built in Jamaica in the last five years. The hotel industry is a multi-million dollar industry. And in recent times, many investors have come to the Caribbean, and in particular, to Jamaica. And in recent times, we have had several Spanish investors who are seeking to do investment, seeking investment opportunities in Jamaica. This presentation today is a part of a larger presentation 
In fact, I would like to do a publication later on this year. So the presentation that I'm about to do is just a synopsis of a larger presentation. Thank you very much. So the outline for the presentation is the background. Given that we have so much effort being directed towards tourism in the Caribbean and tourism in Jamaica in particular, we want to identify the background of the training of culinary education in Jamaica. And then we want to look on the purpose and in light of the theme for this fourth international TVED conference, we're talking about building strategies and practices for the workplace. The purpose becomes very, very clear and relevant. Then I'll be looking at the statement of a problem and a few research questions and the methodology in which I used to do this study. And I will share a few of the findings and try to do a conclusion. The main purpose of the study is basically twofold. It's firstly an exploratory study, which seeks to identify the realities of culinary education in Jamaica. Where are we as a people in Jamaica in terms of the development of culinary? There are many things that have been saying, and we want to appreciate the realities of what is actually happening. And based on this research, I will be sharing how we actually got some very relevant information and how we can move forward as a nation. And then to suggest some strategies needed to achieve the SDGs in culinary. The background, there are three major tertiary institutions in, in Jamaica. University of Technology leads the way from as early as 1958, and over time they have modified or changed their names of the program, but they started way back from 1958. And then we have the Montego Bay Community College and the Brownstone Community College. They started uh, in 1975 as, at that time, an extension for Cape, and eventually they started offering culinary programs. Then we have Hard Trust NTA, Hard College of Hospitality Services, which actually began in 1986, and they lead a group of TVET institutions in culinary education. In fact, in 1986, they started out with Runaway Bay Heart Academy, and by 1995, they modified their program and training issues to Runaway Bay Heart Hotel and Training Institute. And since then, they have been doing a tremendous job in the training among other disciplines. Hard College of Hospitality Services works in collaboration with other institutions, such as Western Hospitality, which be began their training in about 2009, and the Caribbean Institute of Hospitality, which began their training as early as 1984. Hard College of Hospitality also is in partnership with international culinary, sorry, international culinary institution where they provide professional culinary training and certification program. And as such, in 2005, they began straight professional training and certification for culinary, with, with collaboration with Culinary Institute of America. And in 2006, they actually had their first, their very first graduation 
of six executive chefs in Jamaica. And since 2006 to present, they have had several designations of trained professionals uh, from executive chefs, executive sous chefs, chef de cuisine, um, among others. In 2017, American Culinary Federation came on board as a certification body. The main purpose purpose statement. There are over 200 registered hotels in Jamaica. 200 registered hotels in Jamaica. And uh, there are more than 90% expatriates who are actually working as the executive chefs or the top positions in the hotels. My research questions, how has professional training and certification impacted you as a hotel employee? And do you think professional training and certification provide the medium for promotion or job incentives in the hotel industry? The method is was a, a mixed method was used and we used a snowball sampling in which we gathered uh, about 30 or 40 persons who were trained and certified and I have in my email and I sent them the questionnaire they answered the questionnaires and then I requested of them to forward the questionnaire to their colleagues who have gone through certification and training from Jamaica. And from that, I had 47 of such trained and certified chefs. Also used direct questionnaires to 25, there were 25 question, 28 questions that were handed out and received about 25 of such. And then there was a focus group in which there were four participants. And from the four participants, I'd ask some direct questions. And I would like to share some of the findings. The total questionnaires were 78. And the areas where we collected the data from, Mont from Port Antonio, Kingston, and St. Andrew, and St. Anne specifically in Ocho Reyes and Runaway Bay. Limitations of the study, there were less than 100 participants who were engaged in the study. And yes, there's a need for a larger study to be, conducted, to be conducted in order to get a more fulsome research from this process. Some of the findings I want to share, 52% of the population believe that the chefs will have to obtain international experience to become recognized in Jamaica. Other findings, what's the question, what skills do you feel were developed during professional training and certification process? And the chefs mentioned interpersonal skills, leadership, technical competence, time management, self-development, increased confidence, and professional ethics were some of the skills that were developed during the process of training. Another question, what are some of the greatest challenges experienced after training and certification? Some of the findings are lack in technical recognition compared to the expatriates, reduced opportunities for up upward mobility in the larger hotel chains, and a lack in entrepreneurial support for startup or to manage their businesses. And in concluding, more than 80% of the participants believe that culinary training and education in Jamaica has added quality to their career. Education, culinary education has the capacity and the potential to help reduce financial leakage in Jamaica and culinary education can, in fact, improve 
employment. And I will close with this, food for thought. Increased collaboration is needed between policymakers and the stakeholders with the object to improve the opportunities for locally trained and certified chefs. And further examination needs to be considered in the curriculum used for the culinary training program. And as well as increased collaboration needs to be done to access the support needed, such as business plan and microfinancing to assist those chefs who have graduated and have been certified to possibly start their own business. Thank you very much. Right. Our last set of presenters are none other than Rhonda Alexander and Nigel Richards. So I'll start with introducing Rhonda Alexander in alphabetical order. Uh, Rhonda Alexander has worked in the hospitality industry for 21 years. Her love and passion are preparation, the service, and the science behind food. She possesses an associate degree in food and beverage management, as well as a bachelor's of science degree in family consumer science. Presently, she tutors at Geriatric Adolescent Partnership Program, GAPP, Food Preparation Nutrition Part-Time, and works as at the Eric Williams Medical Science Complex full-time as a dietetic technician. She is in the process of becoming a certified mediator. In addition, she is pursuing an MA in leadership, in leadership in TVET and workforce development at the University of the West Indies St. Augustine in Trinidad and Tobago. Our partner in presentation there is Nigel Richards. He's presently pursuing a Master's of Arts in Leadership in TVET and Workforce Development at the University of the West Indies in St. Augustine, Trinidad and Tobago. Um, he holds a UE postgraduate diploma in education, a technical teacher's diploma from St. John's S. Donaldson Technical Institute and a craftsman's diploma in machine shop craft practice from the Pleasantville Senior Comprehensive School. He works as a technical vocational teacher and a dean of discipline in Separia West Secondary School and is a certified level four CVQ assessor with National Training Agency in Trinidad and Tobago. Please welcome our dual presenters to come to the podium if they wish. Can I get a quick? Click on. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I am Nigel Richards, together with Rhonda Alexander. As we are about to do our presentation, I have the same sentiment as Ms. Rosales expressed about being here. We are happy to be here. We will also want to take the opportunity to thank our coordinator, Dr. Marjorie Jemison. Charles, together with Mr. Davis, for motivating us and cultivating us and giving us this opportunity to be here. So thank you both. Today we are focusing on sustainable development. Goals 4 and 8 with the context of Trinidad and Tobago. We are focusing on quality education. 
Goal 4 and Goal 8, decent work and economic growth. The current state of Tibet in Trinidad and Tobago is a work in progress. With the formation of the Accreditation Council of Trinidad and Tobago, the introduction of a seamless system of education, articulation in a quality assurance framework, articulated in a quality assurance framework. The Accreditation Council is responsible for monitoring the accreditation process of TVET program levels three to levels five in maintaining high standard and ensuring quality. The National Training Agency is the umbrella body, the umbrella agency in Trinidad and Tobago that is affecting reform in Trinidad and Tobago. It was established in 1999. I must say the NTA has been evolving since 1904. It continues to involve. It was the Industrial Board of Trinidad and Tobago, and today it's the National Training Agency. And the role of the National Training Agency, it articulates the occupational standards. It provides training for the assessor in the workforce. It conducts quality assurance. It manages facility audits. Some of the benefits have been achieved by the NTA. The NTA is responsible for our national qualification framework. It's also responsible for the CVQ, not just certification. NTA is responsible for the NVQ certification, but CVQ, as we all know, it's throughout the Caribbean, and CXC is responsible for certifying people in the CVQ. Some of the benefits also, as you can see, we outlined five benefits there. A certification will attest to your competency in relation to approved national standards. It's recognized and promotes and portable qualification throughout the curriculum. So in reality, as we continue to speak about CARICOM unity and unification, the CVQ helps us achieve those, that goal. And it's also based on standard determined by industry because it's competency-based, which means we have a very close relationship with the industry. Everything is, we try to provide a replica of what happens in industry. We look also at the benefits to the individual who have achieved this competency. It proves that you have attained competency to a given set of work activities. It matches your ability to a better salary. It enables you to make progress in his or her career by moving from one level to another. It provides clear learning goals and knowledge of what skills are needed to become fully competent in a particular job. If, if an individual is self-oriented, is progressive, the set of learning goals, you can actually study it and move from one level to the other level. And the benefits to the employees. In Trinidad and Tobago, we have the TVET Control Center. It's an online database where employees can tap into it. They can get all necessary information related to employees. In terms of your qualification, your work experience, what level you are at CVQ, it's all listed there. So it makes it easy for the employers to source workers. It reduces the cost of recruiting or recruitment process. It provides an independent 
assessment of an employer's skills and experience. It ensures performance in the workplace. Because when the employer look at your qualification, they can know what level you are at. They can know your experience. And it's very easy for them to ensure when they employ you or when they recruit you, you have the necessary skills. Again, as we're trying to recall, it is competency-based. So if you're at level one, it would match the entry level for the industry. Prior learning assessment and recognition. This is also handled by the National Training Agency. As we all know, TVET is concerned with learning, informal learning and informal learning. So it takes into consideration the experience that people may have who didn't have the opportunity to actually go to school and get formal learning. But remembering that you have acquired a vast amount of experience and knowledge that is critical, and if someone wishes to be certified, they can contact the NTA and an expert will be provided whereby you will be able to be test your, be able to be certified because the final opportunity that presents itself is that everyone must be certified. So what prior learning assessment and recognition provides for you, it provides a more flexible, competent workforce. It empowers individuals to take responsibility for their training and personal development and to recognize the valid validity of learning outside of the formal education sector. As we all say, experience is the greatest teacher. So we cannot actually leave all these people. So at this point, we are making the certification of individuals more flexible. The NTA is not a standalone institution. The NTA, it's like connecting the Caribbean together because each of the member states in the CARICOM has their own NTA. Here in Jamaica, we have Heart Trust. In Trinidad and Tobago, we simply call it the National Training Agency. So all these are unifying institutions in the Caribbean. And of course, as my colleague remind me, we are pursuing one common goal. The Caribbean Association of National Training Authority, CANTA, is the Caribbean Community Regional Coordinating Mechanism for TVET and by extension, the National Vocational Qualification. We now look at post-secondary education in Trinidad and Tobago. The University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus, Again, this is an institution that is common throughout the Caribbean. It was established in Trinidad and Tobago in 1960. The School of Education provides teacher training and professional development. And in keeping in recognition with prior learning, not the School of Education also created the opportunity for technical vocational teachers to be trained. And this was an effort to create leadership in the industry. This was an effort that if technical teachers are also trained professionally, they would be have they would achieve more recognition. It's an effort to change the discourse of TVET. So in 2012, they launched the Masters of Art program in leadership in Tibet and workforce development to help develop leaders for the future. And I must say also, in September of this year, 2019, the University of the West Indies will also be launching, that is the St. Augustine campus, 
a diploma in education for TVET teachers. This is another milestone. And we also, as I said, it's a leading institution in the Caribbean. It's a leading institution in Trinidad and Tobago. And it is giving recognition to TVET. It is changing the discourse of TVET. Because if we continue to look at TVET at one level as simply craftsmen, it makes life difficult. But things are changing. The Trinidad and Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Industry, established in 1967, another institution, because this institution is also common to throughout the Caribbean. We are all into tourism. And this is also playing a critical role in establishing tourism training, hospitality training. MIC, the Metal Industry Company and Institute of Technology. This is a labor market system offering a wide range of industrial relevant programs such as short job entry courses for youth, short term and long term personal training courses. The company also trains and e examines training for journeymen and master craftsmen living disciplines such as electrical, electronics, mechanical, manufacturing, construction craft through their high program. My friend Rosales, she mentioned all the courses that MIC does. The Youth Training and Employment Program, YTEP, which was initially formed, as she mentioned, and we are again reinforcing this, that so many youths who, who dropped out of school, who were in, unemployed, it provides training for them that they may be able to become entrepreneurs. YTEP from then to now has expanded. It initially caters for people from the age or youths from the age of 15 to 25. It has expanded now and moved from 15 to 45 being able to cater for a larger pool of individuals. It creates lifelong learning. Its focus is still maintained on entrepreneurship. The National Energy Skills Corporation, Trinidad and Tobago by far and large is an industrialized nation. Trinidad in particular is industrialized. Tobago deals so much more with tourism. So the NEC has created this partnership between the industry, the public sector, the Ministry of Education, to provide energy-related industry training for the industrial sector. And I also must say all those things are market-driven. It's relevant to the industry. The College of Science, Technology, and Applied Arts of Trinidad and Tobago was established in 2000. It offered a wide range of technical and academic programs at different levels. Performing arts, library service, journalism. Because what we have to understand that Tibet is not only plumbing, masonry, welding, TVET is also concerned with fields such as performing arts, as mentioned, medical services, medical technicians, journalism. And because of the demand, and also changing the discourse of TVET, because we don't want TVET to remain at one level. So we have articulated the levels that people could rise academically to move on. The UTT, established in 2004, also is a, was there to help the situation with workforce development graduates and make them industry ready. 
So what we have done is look at what the National Training Agency duties and function are. We also look at what the postgraduate, post-secondary education does in Trinidad and Tobago. And they have all combined to form the ideal Caribbean citizens. It creates meaningful work. It creates education for all. We believe that it's economically feasible and ecologically viable. So I want to thank you all for this presentation. It is not the end because Tibet continues to evolve. Thank you. Right. Um, we've come to... Right. So we're going to take questions and answers. And uh, it's going to take us only three minutes. We have only three minutes to do this. Be specific with your questions. If you have comments to make, make them short so that we can be within three minutes. Now, let me do a summary first, and then we can go to questions and answers. So we had three sets of presenters. The three sets of presenters all spoke to the connection between SDGs and TVET. The first set of presenters focused on SDG 8 and the next individual presenter connected culinary education with SDGs and the final set of presenters connected SDG 8 and SDG 4 with the TVET. I think they were very informative and they're full of data. I think you came out having learned something new from both Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago. With that said, I would like to welcome the floor for questions and answers. The microphones are in three different places. If you wish to make a comment or ask questions, just line yourself closer to the microphones. Thank you very much. It's just an overview of the situation in Trinidad and Tobago. Are you doing any research in the community? Are you doing any research around these themes, especially prior learning? I noticed you have a prior learning infrastructure. Do you have any research coming up on that? Um, I. Thank you. Any other question or comment from the audience, from the coordinators of the students? Right. Hello, I do have a question. All right. Good Go afternoon. In, please introduce yourself. Okay. I'm Carl Barnett. Um, I'm with Grace Kennedy. Um, one of the, in one of the presentations, uh, it was mentioned about attitude, and I think that's one of the issues that we have is how do we prepare um, the, the students um, in having the correct attitude, and it's very difficult to, to define what that attitude is, but um, how do we prepare them for the workforce, 
have them understand what is expected when it comes to an attitude. Everyone is well trained and understands their specific job function, but a bigger part of the job is the attitude. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good question. Um, what we've noticed is leadership, qualities, and looking at, as teachers, the techniques, strategies offered into the classroom. And I, well, personally, I look at differentiation instructions. That is a theory posed by Thomilson, and what it contains is process, content, and product. So what you're doing is training them to get the job done without changing who they are as individuals. Because nobody likes to be contained. They don't like the identity ripped away from them. And when you look at our Caribbean region, we all have different socioeconomic backgrounds, different cultural upbringing, and what have you. So our jobs as educators is to teach people how to get tasks done for their employers without taking away their individuality and in so doing, sort of encouraging them in a peaceful, meaningful way to conform. Any other question? Thank you very much for the answer. I have a comment or question to Mr. Dale. I would have wanted to see your such questions. I would have wanted to see which of the questions were lending themselves, or each of the two questions, were lending themselves to either quantitative or qualitative because you chose to do mixed method. There was a do question. A do question, and there is it's a comment, a do question always lend itself to answering yes or no without having to explore the person. So the do question was, as I understand it, was a questionnaire item. The first question lent itself to a qualitative research. So therefore, I did not see which of the two questions were leading to qualitative, right? That's my comment. Right, so we come to the end of this presentation, and I would like you to give them a big <laughs> clap. Thank you very much, presenters. You've done yourself a good job.